Hey, welcome to this week's video. Bit of a random one, 40 things to master, do or explore before you are 40. The reason being that I just turned 40 a couple of weeks ago, as you can see, the big 4-0. So yeah, I just had a little think about one of the most important things that I've had to master in order to be where I am at 40 in terms of you know, pretty happy, pretty satisfied, pretty excited about the future. The first one is to seek close friendships. So it's one of those things where sometimes people think they need like hundreds of people around them or lots of attention, likes, blah, blah, blah. You don't need any of that. You really just need one or two friends that you feel safe with. So people that you can be honest with, that you can show all parts of yourself to. And that is one of the most wholesome things that you can get. And obviously you need that in a relationship as well, but that can be trickier. So I always say just start with friendships if you find that really hard. So you need to be able to be your whole self or it's not a healthy friendship. The second one is to drop shame. So shame is kind of that underlying emotion that stops us from doing all of the things that we want to do or that makes us feel crappy about ourselves when we're in relationships with people or pursuing goals and stuff like that. So it's tricky one but it pretty much underlies a lot of your negative emotions so if you can kind of explore that one and Brene Brown is a really good person for exploring vulnerability and shame then I would totally do that. The third one is to heal attachment wounds so there's lots of different attachment styles it's a psychological science so it's something that has been studied and well proven you have securely attached people and then you have anxiously attached people and there's various forms of that as well. If you don't have secure attachment, then it's very hard for you to form safe relationships with people. And it is very hard for you to show all parts of yourself in your relations with others. So just looking into that is actually really amazing. Recognizing where you're at, because then you can articulate to the people that are important in your life. You can actually start working through becoming more secure with your loved ones. Number four is to try psychedelics. That is not a medical recommendation, but they are great. Really good for opening your subconscious, exploring new, to new ideas in my case, supported in healing trauma, this kind of thing. So pretty cool if you game in a safe environment. Number five, learned how to lift weights. It really helps to strengthen your nervous system. It's medicinal because as your muscles grow and you become stronger, you actually produce more healthy hormones and all this kind of thing. So it helps you with your resilience, your bone density, your sleep, your self-confidence, your posture, and all of these other wonderful things. So learn how to lift weights and lift them properly. You want to master a healthy diet. So even if you start this when you're 30 and you don't get there till you're 40, who cares? Like you're going to be so much better off for the rest of your life because a healthy diet is key to longevity. It is key to being happy and healthy. So, you know, you can't just eat shit your whole life and expect your body and mind to thrive. That's not how it works. So start just trying to support yourself in mastering a healthy diet by the time you're 40. If you're over 40, you know, never too late to start. Number seven is to learn how to self-regulate. So that means learn how to keep your state of being within what we call a safe window. So not so overstimulated that you need to numb yourself down, not so understimulated that you have no motivation to do anything. If you are in those kinds of states, like super anxious or super depressed, there is something going on with your nervous system, nothing wrong with it, but something that just needs your attention because your body doesn't feel safe regulating your nervous system so that you can be safe and stay in that safe window so you can rest, heal and rejuvenate when you're not busy doing stuff. Number eight is to find a calm place. So I have that as my house or the beach, you know, somewhere you go and you immediately feel calm. It's called having a resource, help to self-regulate. Number nine is to find a safe place, person or thing. So like, what is your favorite hobby? What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite music? Who's your favorite person? Like, where can you go and what can you do that immediately helps you drop into a space of calm and safety? Find that. Number 10, identify what you need in order to feel balanced. So. How much interaction with the outside world do you need? How much healthy food do you need? What kind of job do you need? What kind of relationship with your friends do you need? Like, what do you need in your life in order to maintain your balance? If you are off balance, work out what you need and bring yourself back into balance. Work out how much money you need in order to be happy. That's number 11. So that just means like the more money you have does not mean the more happy you'll be. But if you spend your entire life pursuing money, you probably will not be happy. So find out how much you need. You know, I know what income I need in order to be able to travel, have a bit of time off, love what I do at work in terms of the hours that I work and feel good about it. You know, I'm not trying to be rich. I'm just trying to live a life I love and I know what number I need to earn in order to do that. Number 12 is write down what you are afraid of and free yourself from that. It can be hard, might need a psychologist, 
you know, might just need a little bit of self-development and that's it, but fears can really hold you back. You know, if it's a fear of spiders, it's not such a big deal, but if it's like a fear of, you know, getting in a relationship, for example, it could affect the quality of your whole life. So if you're afraid of something and it's impacting your daily life, work through it. No shame in it. As you remember, number two, drop shame. Number 13, work out how much time you want to spend working per week. You know, just 60 hours a week feel good for you? It might be a good pay packet, but does it feel good for you? You know, you need somewhere between how much you earn and what kind of quality of life you have. And it's really good to work that one out. You know, you may love to be a daycare worker, but you also might like to jet set travel three times a year. You can't do both because you won't have enough money. So work out that balance. Number 14, ask yourself, are you working to live or living to work? That's again about the balance. Which one is it? Number 15, which area in your life are you happy to take risks? Because this sort of thing really helps to develop resilience, really helps to develop confidence. So you identify somewhere where you kind of feel like you could kind of cross a bit of a line that makes you a little bit scared, but has a great outcome. Start there and then work on something else and work on something else. You know, and this is how you're gonna kind of increase your capacity for change and your capacity to go after the things that you want. Number 16, love your body. Whether you need to get a psychologist, go lift weights, eat better food, whatever it is that you need to do. Work on loving your body. It's a very long-term process for some people, but it is absolutely worth it. You should feel good in the body that you are in. And a lot of the time that will require effort and investment because we do not live in a society that supports body love. Number 17, find and experience true safety. I had no idea what this meant until about 16 months ago. You know, so that's where you can be your whole self as vulnerable as vulnerable can be and nobody is going to hurt you. You know, people just give you love and support. You know, hadn't really experienced that before. So that would actually probably be number one on my list if there was anything, because that trickles down into every other aspect of your life and enlivens it in a way that you cannot imagine. So if you do not feel safe in your life, in your relationships, in your friendships or whatever, or in your body, work on that. Number 18, find authenticity. Who are you? Who are you as a person? What is important to you, regardless of everyone who's watching? Like if everybody could not see you and you could do anything you want, what would that be? That is who you are. If you don't know, work on that. Number 19, find autonomy. That means that you want to be able to make decisions from yourself for yourself and know what things are important to you. Number 20, stop watching the news because it's full of shit. Number 21, list all the things that make you, you. That's another thing about like finding your own authenticity. Like who are you? What do you like? What are your characteristics? You know, ask your friends, ask your family members, ask whatever, like find out all the different things that make you, you. What are your talents, your skills, your interests, your passions, your values, everything. Write a massive list because it's really good to get to know yourself in that way. Number 22, inquire into your mental health issues. If you have any, they are not your genetics. They are a representation of your lifestyle and your story from the time you were born up until now. So if you ask questions and you start looking outside of the box, you might actually be able to achieve a whole new level of health and wholeness and happiness that you never imagined. Mental illnesses are not a life sentence, you know, in most cases. They can be healed and worked through and your quality of life can absolutely be improved. Number 23, explore your physical health issues. Again, most of these things aren't genetic. Lifestyle pulls the trigger. So inquire into them. You know, you have raging PMS. What is going on down there? And you have IBS. What is going on in there? Ask questions. Most of the time it's related to your nervous system. So your stress levels, your childhood, how you handle stress, how you interact with the world around you, how autonomous you are, how well you know yourself, how you treat yourself, whether you love yourself, how you feel about your body. All of these different things impact your actual health. You know, so always a good idea to ask questions because a lot of times as you heal the insides, you actually start healing the health conditions that you may be plagued with. You know, and I've done this a lot, so that's 100% true. Number 24 is explore the idea that you are more than just your mind. You know, your body actual energy field is like here. It's everywhere, you know? And then when somebody else comes into your space, your energy mixes with their energy. So you're not just like a brain that thinks with this genetic weapon inside, you know, and in this like skin sack. Like that's, that's not really who you are. You go way beyond that, right? So it would make sense that you'll be told that that's all you are because that gives you a very limited worldview and a very limited idea of your capacity. But if you understand that you are not, Joe Dispenza is somebody who's really great for this, um, or Dawson Church, they are very heavy on the research of your mind extending way outside of your body and how that links in with your emotions and your capacity to change. So explore that concept. Number 25, travel somewhere, you know, get out of comfort zone, travel somewhere where you're a little bit scared. Not for your life though, just a little bit scared, but safe. Number 26, live alone, be alone, spend time alone somewhere. 
somehow, sometime. You know, sometimes people, they've never been alone and they're terrified of being alone because they don't know who they are. So having a little bit of time alone, you know, I've even had clients that have done like one hour on their own once a month, that's it. And that makes them anxious, but you know, they just start to work their way through that. And then they actually become way more confident and self-assured as people, you know, because they realize actually I'm quite a resourceful human being. Actually, I'm quite fun to be around. Actually, I've got lots of hobbies. Actually, I've got lots of skills, you know? So as long as you don't spend time by yourself, it's because you're scared of yourself maybe, or you don't know yourself very well. And maybe you judge yourself. So that's something that you could start working on because it's very good to be happy with your own company. You don't have to spend all your time alone, just a little bit. Number 27 is cut back on your social media because you are the product. They are hijacking your brain and the algorithm is not legit, you know? So it's great to kind of follow people, see what your friends are doing, but outside of that, it can actually be very psychological damaging. And there are a lot of studies on people's declining mental health, body image and self-esteem because of social media. And just keep in mind that most of the people who thrive on social media are the ones who are kind of like the luckiest. You know, like they've got great genetics, they're beautiful, all those different things. They thrive because they look pretty good. And, you know, I always say with my clients, when they tell me they wanna try this new thing or buy this new product, I'll say like, you know, what's the girl who's selling it really hot? And they'll go, yeah. And I'm like, well, would you buy it if they were not that hot? And they'd say, probably not, you know? So sometimes people succeed on there just because they're really beautiful. So not taking that away from them because that's really cool you know, but it's very good to understand that about social media and understand that there are some very, very, very quality people in this world who do not live on social media and you might be missing out on them and what they have to share with the world. And also on top of that, you'll get your brain back because it's hijacking your dopamine circuit. It's making you have like ADHD. So cut back on your socials. Number 28, stop comparison and competition. You know, you're just in your own race here. You're working out what you want, what aligns with you. You're trying to live the best life of your dreams, not anyone else's dreams, not to prove to anyone anything. So can you forget about everybody else and you just focus on yourself in that way? Focus on caring about other people, yes. But focus on your own goals. You'll be much happier. Number 29, learn to align yourself with the things that you want. So you want something, get yourself aligned with that. But don't push, chase, plan, analyze. Because it doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. It kind of just wears you out. Number 30, learn to surrender. So that means let go of the mental control that you think that you need to have over yourself. Like if you feel like you need to have three babies in a marriage by the time you're 30, don't marry someone you don't like when you're 25 just to try and hit that mental goal that you set for yourself. Because, you know, it's not the best idea because you have to be with that person for the next 50 years, <laughs> you know? So maybe that's not the right timing for you. Maybe you're meant to have your kids after you're 35. Like, I don't know, but you're not gonna know unless you surrender, right? So you just gotta kind of surrender control a little bit work out what's important to you and kind of just flow down that river and you'll be surprised like things always come up i didn't start help fixing my health issues until i stopped trying to control every single part of my life i kind of threw my hands up in the air and i was like oh my god i don't know how to fix it and then no joke like things started appearing for me so surrender much better than trying to control and remembering as well a lot of what you think you need has just been programmed into your brain through social media it's actually not even what you need so number 31, research corporations because they're trying to steal your brain and they're all owned by the same people. So pretty much every single thing that you think is an individual entity is actually just one entity. They're just making sure they catch all people and they don't have very good plans for you. Like this really good quote, I just wrote a book the other day and it said, corporations aren't trying to kill you. They just don't care if what they produce does kill you. So you gotta be very careful because they want your money and they want your brain, they want your identity, they want your freedom, they want everything. Because the more of that you give away, the more money of yours they will take. And a corporation's goal is not to make your life better, it is to make money off you. That's it. Number 32, you take a break from your phone, because again, that's hijacking your dopamine pathways and probably giving you ADD. Number 33, stop alcohol. Yeah, maybe a really great wine or something like that with a friend every now and then, sure. But using alcohol as a coping mechanism, instead of doing that, learn to self-regulate. Learn to find a safe space, learn about safety, learn to find calm in your life somehow. Alcohol is destructive to your health, it backs up your liver, it's not good for your hormones. There's a lot of problems with alcohol. So try and get rid of it. You're nearly there. <laughs> See a somatic therapist. Somatic therapy is working with trauma that is stuck in the body and it is the most liberating thing you can do. Even if you think you don't have trauma, you would have the best experience if you explored somatic experiencing. I've been doing this for like over a year now and it is so cool. Number 35, see a therapist, it's not shameful. It doesn't matter if you do three sessions, 10, or you see them for 10 years. Like just someone to give you some objective feedback on yourself is really good. 
Number 36, learn to embrace uncertainty. I am working on this one right now. I'm trying to, you know, need to know where everything's going. Just trying to sit there and then see what happens, you know? Not being lazy, you know, but kind of just staying in my center and working out what's meant for me rather than trying to control everything. Number 37, let go of overthinking because you cannot think your way out of a problem. Number 38, start a journal. Just start writing shit down. Doesn't matter what it is, just dump it all down because you start to clear your head, especially if you're an overthinker. Number 39, learn about internal family systems, AKA parts therapy. So we all have different parts within us and they interact like kind of throughout the day and they all have their own agendas and their own ideas. Sometimes they work together, sometimes they complete polar opposites. So for example, if you have a binge eating issue, you have anxiety or you know, you never seem to uh, achieve your goals, like you feel like you sabotage yourself all the time, you probably have polarizing parts in your nervous system and they need to come together. And if you work on parts therapy, you can get to learn all about those little details. And as you bring them together, you actually feel really whole and calm. I've done this a lot as well over the last year and a half and it's been life changing. Number 40 is start having honest conversations. So find those safe people in your life and actually be honest about who you are because it's gonna help you feel really grounded in yourself. Bonus, because I thought of these after I wrote them, is one, ditch all that masculine energy if you don't feel like it is yours. So if you feel like you have to show up in the world like a man and act like a man and control everything and dominate everything, this is not probably not your true energy. It's probably a protective mechanism or there is a lack of men in your life that are providing that energy for you. I have this problem. Lots of my clients have this problem. We work through it. It's actually really fascinating. So if you look up kind of what masculine energy is and remembering everything is a spectrum, not taking that off the off the table. You know, even after doing all this work, I still have quite a lot of masculine energy because I am quite ambitious. I like to do a lot of things. I like to think a lot. That's technically more of a masculine quality, but that is who I am. You know, but there are things that I was doing, like being aggressive and pushing myself to extremes and stuff, which actually were not good for me. You know, I was doing it to protect myself. So. Very good idea to look up what a typical masculine trait would be a feminine trait. And if you feel like actually you're probably more like on this side, the feminine side, but you're acting over here, start letting some of that stuff go and start embracing this stuff and see how your life will change. And lastly, set boundaries. So you can't really set boundaries unless you feel safe, unless you know who you are and what you want, but they're very important. So you need to be able to say yes to things that you want to say yes to and no to things that you want to say no to, to protect your energy. And also it teaches people how to treat you. So that is it. <laughs> 42 things to do before you're 40 or learn before you're 40. So that is this week's video. I will see you next week. I'm actually going to do one of the requests that I got. So see you then. Bye.